pour down the sons of disobedience. And the scripture is very clear. So don't stay there. Become a child of obedience. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. Celebrate this remembrance because of what he's done for you. Now, this glory to be revealed. Uh, as we look back at this in Romans. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So there's this glory that's going to be revealed. If I were to say to you today, guys, suddenly God is going to make it possible for you to play in the Super Bowl this next year, and you're going, your team is going to win, you're going to score the most points, you're going to be MVP, and all sorts of things, you're going to get uh, a Super Bowl ring that you can't even carry around. You're going to have to put it in a wheelbarrow and roll it around. You say, okay, that sounds like some glory. No, that's cheap stuff. That's nothing compared to what God's got. He's going to reveal to us this glory. All of these things that He has planned for us as His bride. But notice this says, for the anxious longings of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. We're going to be revealed. There's going to be a reveal. It's not going to be boy or girl. It's going to be child of God. <coughs> and guess who we're going to look like? Jesus. Are we ready? Are we anxious for that? Are we looking forward to that day? You know, the creation has been subject to futility ever since the sin of the Garden of Eden. And the creation itself is also looking forward to the day it's going to be set free. Set free from its slavery to corruption. And it's going to come into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Yes, creation can't wait until you as children of God are revealed with Jesus and His glory. Well, I think that's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I ask myself sometimes, why all the storms? Why all the earthquakes? Why all the tornadoes? Why all the things? For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we groan <coughs> in ourselves, waiting eagerly. Are we waiting eagerly for something? Yes, Pastor, the end of the sermon and lunch. <laughs> no, how about waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons? The redemption of our body to be made without any evidence of the effect of sin and be in the glory of Jesus himself. So today, if you're a person who's not yet responded to what Christ has done on your behalf, can I just say to you, Jesus has done it all. He's done everything. He hasn't left anything for you to do except to receive it by faith. And as we look at this last passage from Hebrews chapter 10, I, I want you to look at this by this we will have been sanctified. Sanctified is set apart. If you're in the student industry today, you know that. And the idea of being set apart, made sufficient, perfected in the sense of everything that is needed, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? Once for all. One sacrifice. You may go to some places and see crosses with Jesus still on them and have people tell you sometimes that, that Jesus is still dying in some sense for our sins. And, and that's in direct contradiction to Scripture, which says Jesus died once. He died for all. And so in the Old Testament sense of a priest, every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But he, Jesus, having offered one sacrifice, for sins for all time sat down at the right hand of God waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made put still for his feet. What does it say? For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified set apart. Today are you a sanctified person? Are you a person that is 
uh, surrendered your heart and life to Jesus, repented of sins, received Him as Lord and Savior. That's not an end. That's the beginning of a life. That is the life that goes on for all eternity. That is the life in which the burden of your own sin, you realize, was placed fully on Christ. And the wrath of God for your sins was placed fully on Christ. And in His love for you, that love has been placed fully on you. Will you say yes to Him today? Will you put your faith and trust in Him? And brothers and sisters in Christ, are we examining ourselves and saying, how amazing is this sacrifice that was made for us? Could you pray? Father God, we come to you this time when we ask for someone who right now you're tugging at their heart and they're, you're working in their mind and they're knowing that they need to say yes. They need to turn from living their life their own way and repentance and not try to clean themselves up. Not try to be better, but to be surrendered. Just to let you do what you do. They would turn their thoughts toward you right now. They would say, yes, Jesus, please save me. Come into my heart, my life. Forgive me of my sin. I receive you. Put my faith in you, Jesus, and not in my good works or anything else. Please make me a child of God. I'm going to walk with you for all of my life and all eternity. Lord, for those of us who are struggling with other issues, maybe you're calling us to be a part of the church family here. Maybe you're calling us to full-time Christian service. I don't know. But Lord God, whatever you're speaking into the hearts and minds of your people, let us say yes to you today, knowing that your love for us is perfect. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, time of invitation is an opportunity to be serious and make it known, deal with the realities that if I'm going to follow the Lord, I'm going to do it openly, publicly, because when I get home, I want Him to exceed me in His presence openly and publicly. So as we stand, as people are singing, if you know you need to respond, I'll meet you here. Come to stand.